I thought this was really interesting because I want to listen to how he speaks about Aragorn and the passion that he brings to the character. It's like so refreshing and it's it's truly a light in the darkness. Like when you look at Rings of Power and we have a couple more articles that I'll look into about like how those interviews were. And if you compare them to the interviews side by side between Viggo Mortensen and like Ismail Cruz Cordova or something. Um, and it's very, it's, it's very telling how Vigo like depends on his craft, um, his acting ability and like how he utilizes that, like as this like talented individual. So, um, this is from, it says Kas, Kasava nine. Was it easier to get into your character since you spent such a long time there and, and, Probably for everyone, yeah. You know, I mean, it's um, it's not quite the same thing, but it's more like doing a play where you do it for such a long time. But it doesn't matter what role I play, you know. I, I, I always like the character I play, you know, or come to understand and, and, and appreciate the character, no matter what, what the job is. There it is. I always come to understand the character that I'm playing. That's a very humble thing to say. What a lot of actors and actresses do currently in modern Hollywood, I feel like, is they take whatever character that they're playing and they don't care to understand what that character has gone through or the suffering or the perseverance or maybe the joy and the passion that that character has because they are too concerned as the actor or actress to impart their own influence on the character and be like, well, this is just mine now, you know, or I'm going to play the character as me because I'm more important than this character that I'm playing. Whereas like Vigo is saying, I want to try and understand the character from their point of view, which like I said, I think is extremely humble. And I don't think you can ever stop learning. It's up to you. But if you want to, you can always pick up some kind of information on the way. And in this case, yes, we had a longer time, so I, I learned more. He can never stop learning about Aragorn. How cool is that? That you're almost like that you're you're studying and learning more about your character as you continue filming. I love that. Aragorn is one of the most beloved characters in, in, in literature and one of the most beloved heroes. Mm -hmm. Was it daunting to take this part? That's a big one. So the interview the interviewer basically says Aragorn is one of the most beloved characters, which she's right in the in the Lord of the Rings. Was it daunting to play that part? You know, what what kind of experience does that do you have to be called to to be able to play that part as this beloved character? Societal pressure is probably weighing down on him to to you know, as a as these purists, as these Tolkien purists want the best Aragorn that they could possibly imagine. So that is a lot of weight, but yeah. I hadn't read the book, so I didn't have a preconceived idea of the character, nor of nor a sense that that people that a lot of people might have that idea. Um, but anyway, I mean, I'm I, I I'm more interested in the process of of learning about the role and 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 the experience of shooting the movie. I'm more interested in the experience of learning about the role. This is a classically trained actor who has perfected his craft, who understands the importance of learning about a character and playing it to the best of his ability for the sake of the character that was written by the original author. And, and we'll get to that in a minute because he does talk about that, how he kind of says he has to serve two masters, Tolkien, and Peter Jackson, and how the two actually meshed well together to create this film. I don't think that much about what others' thoughts are about it. I just try to be as faithful to, in this case, you know, I felt like I had two masters. One was Tolkien, one was Peter Jackson. He doesn't pay too much attention to whatever people are saying to the outside world. Now, granted, at this period of time, Twitter probably wasn't a thing, you know, and if it was, it was probably in its infancy. So it wasn't the cancer that it is now. But Vigo specifically mentioned, I don't care about what other people are saying about me or my character or, you know, anything about the, um, 
the outside influences of that because he is more focused on the original intent, which is Tolkien and Peter Jackson and how they were going to come about creating Aragorn. And also, you know, my conscience, my own conscience, as far as doing a good job, it's, it's not different with this than any other, but... Uh... I love that, that he had his own conscience weighing on this to say, I wanted to do a good job with this character. And I mean, granted, every actor wants to do well with the character that they're given. Every actor wants to do well in a role that they are given. But here, it just, I don't know, it feels very, very genuine, very authentic. Um, and you can see that there's a lot of heart in what he says. Maybe when I read these books, I did recognize the foundation for it is really, uh, you know, a lot of, um, in a lot of ways, it's Nordic sagas and, and mythology and uh, stories from Scandinavia and Finland and from the rest of Europe and uh, medieval poems and things. Hmm, even, even Viggo Mortensen seems to be pretty based it in his knowledge of w how Tolkien was able to pull from these Nordic sagas and create his own legendarium. Pretty cool. I recognized that and that I thought it was a unique opportunity to touch the past in a, in a, in a way, you know. I love that too. Like, is, chat, is, is he not just making the best points possible? Touching the past, bringing back the past, honoring the past, you know what I mean? Like, these are all really great things that he's mentioning. You do know that there's thousands and thousands of fans who love passionately about this this book. And, mm. and how, how intimidating is that? This interviewer is grinding him. And she's going, you do know, by the way, that there are thousands of fans that are counting on you to do a good job of bringing, bringing Tolkien's work to life bringing Aragorn to the big screen and doing it justice. Do you understand the weight of that? Like she is grilling him with these questions. She's not just like giving him softballs and going like, uh, oh, so uh, in my, how, how honored were you to play the first female Aragorn or like whatever it was that, you know, they're talking about in uh, Rings of Power. Like they're not lobbing him softballs. Like she is grilling him about how important it is for Tolkien fans to see this legendarium play out like they want it to. So I, I love, I, I actually really do appreciate the interviewer. She's not pulling her punches and Vigo is just answering them perfectly. The truth is that you're going to get some negative feedback from them. Are, are, you, are you afraid of that? No, I mean, I... I like, he's so nonchalant. He's, she goes, are you afraid of getting like negative feedback? And he goes, nah, nah. I'm good. And and yet that's all we hear about in all these other interviews, right? With Rings of Power, they're they're uh, they've got articles and and videos and training sessions on saying here's how you deal with negative criticism and here's how you deal with racist backlash and here's how you deal with all the trolls that are going to come attack you and all this bullshit. And yet this woman is telling him how Thousands of people are weighing on, on him to do a good job in this role and that he's probably most likely going to get backlash because there are people that didn't like his portrayal. What a surprise because there are people on this earth who don't love everything and that's okay. That's totally fine. And yet when she asks him, are you afraid of backlash? He goes, nah. <laughs> How much more based can you get? I love his takes on this. I, I particularly like the poetry and the language of the books, and I do wish we could have had more of that in the film. But you know, that being said, I don't think you can. You, you, we couldn't have put everything in the movie. It's just impossible. It would have been, you know, twenty hours long. But I do think that the um, the spirit of the books and of our experience shooting the movie is there on screen you know it's not this neat little clean fairy tale the experience and the heart and the soul of the books were in the movie um i for me personally agree wholeheartedly that i felt that within the original trilogy 
the trilogy, the only trilogy about Lord of the Rings. Um, I think that's kind of why people understand it as one of the best trilogies of all time, because it did such a great job of bringing those themes, of bringing the soul and heart and passion behind the books and and adapting that for film. Um, not fan ficking it for film, but adapting it for film. And I think those are two completely different things. Um, so I, I again, he's making really good points. Uh, it's difficult to watch at times, and I think that it's it's messy and it's rough and it's raw um, because everybody was committed to doing it and playing. No matter how fantastical the situation was, everybody played it for real. You know, in a sense although more in a visual way than with words. I think it's like Shakespeare. Shakespeare can be very dull, you know, or if people play it for real and try and play it as if it's never been seen, then it can affect you. You can identify with it as a viewer, hopefully. And I think the case here is that these characters feel like they come right out of the book and come right out of the, you know, the misty past that Tolkien was um, trying to bring alive for readers of the 20th century, hopefully Peter Jackson does that now for movie viewers. They feel like there's something real there. There's some connection, uh, even if they don't realize it consciously, with our universal mm -hmm. mythical past, you know. That's so rad. He basically talks about, like, what from what I'm hearing him say, is that when you take something that is more like Old English, where it's kind of difficult to understand, or or you have a uh, language that is difficult to comprehend because it's written differently or it's not more modern or whatnot. The people who play to those same, like, you know, those same poems and that same literature, if they put everything that they can behind that performance and they really give it their all and their heart and their soul and they're in it for the love of the craft or the love of the original, you know, writings, then that's going to portray that same love on the screen. And people will be able, uh, he says, people will be able to identify with that. And that's the great thing. P everyone can identify with good performances, but nobody can identify with wooden, hollow, shallow, manufactured bullshit. People don't identify with that. And if they do, then it just, you know, proves that their existence is one of that same type of quality. And that's sad and that's unfortunate. But when you see performances that are more authentic and, and have more passion behind them and are, are very crafted very well, like Vigo's saying here, people will be able to identify with that no matter what you look like, no matter what your background is, no matter what your culture is, people are going to be able to identify with that. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty much, th for, for the most part, uh, that is the the interview. And I wanted to kind of show you guys that. Uh, he uh, he goes on to talk more about the the process. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, something about that just really spoke to me. Um, I really enjoyed what he had to say. And I thought I would share it with you guys. Uh, let me turn this down. But yeah, it's a great interview. I would encourage you guys to go watch it. I think it definitely portrays a perfect envisionment of why we got such a great Aragorn on the screen and why Viggo Mortensen took it so seriously and why he was so passionate about it and why we're kind of lacking that now. Because the next thing I wanted to go over and uh, we'll check this out is now let's juxtapose the last interview that we saw with Aragorn, with Viggo Mortensen. Let's juxtapose that with what Ismael Cruz Cordova says. And uh, I'll turn this off one more time so you guys can hear this guy kind of talk. I knew that this was gonna happen. Specifically, I mean, I'm a fan, so a lot of reasons, I, I, but one of them is I knew that this was gonna happen. So he says, I knew that this was going to happen. This is in relation to fan backlash and the uh, quote unquote like toxic fandom that was going to attack him on social media. And so he's talking about how he saw it happening and how, you know, he was prepared for it or whatever. But this is kind of what he says after that. I, I would say it. And I mean, I even got a few rejections to the world 
and I still kept going for it because I knew that there was going to be disruption. And in my career, my mission has been that occupy these places. Put my, my mission has been disruption. Let's hear that one more time. Disruption. And in my career, my mission has been that occupy these places, put myself in that and the front lines, be the image of the thing. I have no problem doing that. So I did expect this. He says, my mission has been to occupy these spaces and create disruption. How fucking arrogant is that? What kind of person wants to just take up space, as they would say, create new space for himself to occupy, and then just to s disrupt, just for the sake of disrupting? Juxtapose that with the interview that we just saw with Vigo Mortensen, talking about respecting, talking about learning about the character, experiencing the character, trying to serve Tolkien and Jackson and bringing this character to the thousands of fans who want to see this well done. Juxtapose these two interviews and you get a narcissistic, egotistical asshat, for lack of a better term, and you have a respectful, honorable, noble man who is interested in nothing other than his craft and respecting the past and everything that came before it because he knows that that is what his job is. That, that is what his talent is. That is what his craft is in. And he is a master in that. And that's why Viggo Mortensen's portrayal of Aragorn will forever live on. Ismail Cruz Cordova's taking up space and dismantling and disrupting the entertainment business because he thinks he's doing that for some reason. That's his prime mission, as he says. His, his nonsensical character that was made up won't be remembered after the first year of this season. People will forget him immediately. And it's not just him, it's the whole, it's, it's all the showrunners, it's, it's the entire staff over there at, you know, the Amazon production house that is putting on this show. Because they are so focused on themselves, and not the craft, and not the respect, and not the nobility or the honor of what comes with creating something like this. They're so much more interested in just disrupting and taking up space. But yeah, isn't that isn't that interesting though? How wild is it that we can go from like literally like what? It's been 2 decades since the first since since the trilogy and probably since that interview with Vigo. And look at how different the language is. Look at how different the priorities are um within film, within media, within the craft of acting, of storytelling in general. Oh well.